Let's try this out. Okay. Okay. Let's try this Okay, that's going? That's going, yeah. All right, okay. So, fork in the world. For, fork in the world. For all of us. So, let's see if I can get this thing going. I think I'll do. Who's the artist of that? Okay, I'll know. <laughs> looks just like you. <laughs> so, what is our value proposition? What are we doing here? What we're doing here is very simple. We're changing out a little bit of code that drives globalization and replacing it with our own little bit of code that ultimately is going to drive globalization or under a new way, instead of it being all about compounded annual growth, which is based on how much money, how much return, it's based on how much good these ideas are doing. And Caber, Compounded annual benefit rate is our IP. And ultimately, there's a lot of entities out there, and I mentioned before, Olinga Tahi, who in 2011 started developing something called Internet of Value, which is measuring intangibles. When I shared with him FoundUps, he basically wanted to buy FoundUps. He offered $200 million. I call it a soft valuation because it was like, we will raise this amount, and then we're going to raise this amount, and then we're going to do another, you know, and we'll raise $200 million for it. So it wasn't like, I'm going to give you $200 million for it. It was, he felt comfortable that through these different stages, we could raise $200 million for FoundUps. But on the second line, and I met with him, I, I always, I told him, no one's going to own FoundUps. I don't mind putting it into a trust for two years. That was our initial agreement. But after that, the trust dissolves and FoundUps is not owned by anyone. And I'm, I see myself as really the caretaker of FoundUps. So I walked away from the deal. It was the most exciting thing I've ever done, saying no to that crazy amount of money. Because what it showed me is that what I believe in FoundUps, what I believe, what I, my purpose here has a much bigger vision than any amount of money that can be offered me. I'm trying to save the planet. And for me, every problem that's facing our planet comes out of this. And we call it externalities. An externality is the cost of doing business. So for example, climate change, it's just an externality. It's the cost of doing business. Um, pollution, our beaches, all, just, you know, all the problems, just an externality. So all that trash that's washing up on our beaches every day is just an externality. And these big companies are willing to pay fines because they don't, it's very small compared to you know, the, the, their overall profits and everything else. And unless we change this out, our planet is fucked. It's, there is no future. So I have kids, we all have kids here. I want a planet for my kids. And, and unless we, we, can, we can expose, and this is where you come in, we need to expose what I call the selfish startup and I have the domain, theselfishstartup.com. And the selfish startup is number one, is going to be a book, and we're going to give it for free. And it's going to, and, and the, the cool thing is, is that we have the Zykers movement, who's done all these videos, has prepped everyone. They don't explain, he doesn't explain this. His latest video, I think he's been watching my videos, because he's getting damn close. 
So the three questions from, from uh, Jonathan, from the Zykers movement, watch that. Because he says, answer these three questions. I challenge you. You can laugh at me. This is how it is. You can do whatever. But just answer these three questions. And it's a trick because answer question number two and number three, you cannot answer. Because see, this is an endemic problem. It's not a systemic problem. And most people don't know the difference between an endemic and a systemic problem. So imagine a house of cards, okay? And imagine in this house of cards, there's two stacks. In one stack, I can withdraw a card and it doesn't fall down. In another stack, I withdraw a card and it all falls down. Which is endemic and which is systemic? The one that all falls down. Is which? Systemic. Uh, yeah, 50-50. <laughs> so, so that's a systemic. If, if it all falls down, it's endemic, which means it means that this very thing, this is our whole financial, here's our whole financial market. If I remove this piece from the financial market, it all collapses. It's endemic. The CAGR is endemically built into the system. You cannot remove it. You can't. So the problem is, is like, how do we fix this? So in 2009, by 2011, right, I started, my story kind of goes like this, is that I had one of my, my startups basically validated, which is a nice way to say stolen by Google. And I was pissed, because I thought Google was going to be evil. The last thing Google would ever do is take someone's idea and run with it. So I said to myself, is it me, or is the system broken? And if it's, if it's broken, how would I fix it? That's in 2009. I was angry. I was like, I got to fix this system. The first thing I discovered was this, 99% of pre-seed startups fail. Pre-seed startups are startups which have, let, have no accredited investor. These are accredited investors, potentially, you know, access to their basic millionaires, right? And have less than 100,000 in investments or net profits. Because there's always that story of that, that little guy who started his business and he just kept putting his money in and money in and money in and he becomes a massive company because he can reinvest. So there is a small, small chance that a pre-seed startup can launch, but the reality is the reason why they fail is they don't have access to capital networks. Capital networks are traditionally closed. You need to be invited in, you have to know the right person, right? And if you don't, which is the majority of people on this planet, you really have no, 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 no really opportunity to launch your idea. Because everything is money. I gotta buy the pizza truck, I gotta buy the marketing, I gotta, you know, license. Tons of them. Right? So the first thing I, I learned is that majority fail. Then I realized and learned, and this is actually public, they have is is 90% of seed startups. A seed startup is when investors get involved. 90% of them fail. And they fail because they fail to scale. And what I mean by that is, that, and again, it goes down to this thing right here. So the first one has nothing to do with Kagger. They just don't have access to money. The second one, on the business plan, you have a business plan. It looks like this has a good Kagger potential. Well, 90% fail because they don't have that potential. They, 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 whether they, they execute wrong, whether they... You know, have a wrong team, whether they don't do the market, there's a million reasons why they fail. And then the next thing which kind of blew my mind is, is those that do get venture capital, so a, a seed startup is, is, is 100,000 to 2 million with accredited investors involved. Why? Because now they can call up their buddies and say, hey, I'm working on this, you should be part of this. It's a good old boy network. That's how startups work, right? 25% of venture back fail, and you may see a graph that has, 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 a, has a CAGR growth on it, and then it has a gap on it. They say they can't, they can't cross the chasm. In startups, it's called the chasm. And what happens is the 10% the, the that actually succeed looks like, ah, oh, they're going to make it. But then something happens. Either some new competition comes in, um, they can't uh, maintain their growth for various reasons, and the investors say, listen, guys, we had a good run. Right? We don't have the growth that we wanted, let's pull out, and I say, let's scuttle. They scuttle the, the, the startup. And usually they sell it off, they sell the IP off, and they tell the guys, go try to get it. Better luck next time. So it dawned on me in 2009, it's like, you've got 99% failure, you have 90% failure, 
and then you've got 25% failure. So, so my initial thinking was, you know, all I need to do is come up with a, a, a different way of launching these ideas where the failure is less. And if I, can, if I can launch a lower failure, then we can capture all of this market. And that's how Foundups started. Then what happened was I had this realization. It's about 2000, 2012, 2013, that ultimately every crisis is built on this systemically flawed system and that in, in essence, unless we change this, we won't be able to fix it. And then I had the idea that we need to have a new, completely new framework. Because how can I launch this on our existing framework? I can't. No one's going to laugh at me. It needs to be a, a new framework, which is the web. Okay? So I developed something called the Open Innovation Framework. And after two years of trying to get funding from Silicon Valley, and I like to do the Jimmy Wells story because Jimmy and I are very similar. We're both from Florida. Jimmy Wells is, you know who that is, right? Encyclopedia. Yes. Wikipedia. Wikipedia, yeah. Encyclopedia Wikipedia. Well, people don't know is when he went to Silicon Valley trying to raise money, there was a company called Encarta. Encarta started in 1995, five years before Wikipedia. And massively funded. And they were going after who? Britannica. They were going to disrupt Britannica. So here comes Jimmy with a crazy name saying, I've got the decentralized encyclopedia. Right? And everyone's going to write it. And everyone's going to, kind of like what I'm saying about the startup. Everyone's going to be involved. It's going to be, everyone's going to be part of it. And, you know, and anyone will be able to participate in, in, in launching this encyclopedia. And they said, laughed at him. Jimmy, 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 come on. And Microsoft then was the most powerful company. Number two, you got a stupid name. You need to stop smoking those dubers, go back to Florida, treat mar margaritas, and, you know, let the real individuals launch businesses. You know, there's no way. Well... Long story short, as a, if you can't raise the money, what do you do? You become a nonprofit. So that's why Wikipedia is a nonprofit. Because he knew he was right. The problem is I can't really make Foundups a nonprofit because of the amount of kind of systems that we have to put in place, right? But in 2011, most people don't realize that, and Carter finally closed their doors. They tried to go to CD sales and everything else. So in essence, what, what Wikipedia did and what we're doing is really no difference. It's the same thing, except for instead of disrupting the online encyclopedia, we're disrupting the closed centralized startup and, and the entire house of cards that are built around it. The VCs, the venture, the banks, all the closed capital networks are going to go bye-bye. So, um, what is Cagger? Well, I pretty much covered it. All these things is Cagger. These are financial and this is, you know, these are all financial capitals in the world. All right, this is, we took this one. <laughs> in our restaurant. That's right. <laughs> right, so our entire global, our, this is, and, and I, do you realize over 45% of all capital from corporations now comes from FinTech? GE, you name it. And here's another documentary you have to watch 10 times. I've watched it over 100 times. I watch it every day when I'm at home. When I go to bed, when I feel tired, I put it on. And it's Norm Chomsky's Requiem of the American Dream. That documentary was built for us. Undoubted. Undoubted, baby. That documentary kind of like, here is the problem of the world. This is how it's laid out. This is why it exists, right? I want to see it. It's on my link on the, yeah. Actually, I could probably, we could cast it on here and we could watch it. An amazing document. And every time I watch it, I get another little nugget. You know, just the, and, and that's another piece that we will use in our documentary. It's support. It's four years in the making. It was funded by Kickstarter and it's, it's a masterpiece. And it's, it's, uh, um, come on, what's next? There you go. 45%. So, so, so this now represents, and what does this do? <laughs> this is what Norm says. What the heck are they doing? Eating up the world. They're just eating up the world. And here's the beautiful thing. Who ever knows of the Venus Project? You don't know the Venus Project? I know the Venus Project. Project. Venus Project. Tell us what the Venus Project is. The Venus Project is, 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 is 
that the where they want to build the world, the like world in this little mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. space? The bubble. Mm -hmm. like they have this vision of a, of a sustainable a kind of level seven DAO. Mm -hmm. Level seven DAO. That's all I'm going to say. But before. I just got to meet my brother. <laughs> level seven DAO right there. But you know what's going to happen? This is Venus Project one on one because when this whole market fucking collapses, we're going to be buying up with our huge, by then, our DAO is going to be in the trillions of dollars. And we're going to buy all of this shit. All of these buildings are going to be collapsed. All the people, and they're all going to be Venus One. All this is going to be sustainable. It's all going to be permaculture. It's all going to be like living for free, uh, you know, self power. The, all of a sudden, all the small, you know, all these cities are going to go. And this is going to be. Mark my word, this is Venus Project 101. We have a guy that's trying to go after the president and he wants to create the whole Venus Project. Well, just tell him you don't have to because we're going to have, we're going to have plenty of space for him. <laughs> Who's that? There's a guy, my brother will tell you about it tonight when he tells you. He's All right. Really cool about this guy. So results. This is the results of Kagger. Beautiful results. You know, these are externalities. This is just the cost of doing business. Yeah, you know, so what? Now, this is the world that our financial systems you know, is, is, is just, you know, I hate to use the the woman and president raping, but they're really raping our planet of its natural resources. Um, and uh, not She's really. that horrible smog. Yeah, I love this one here. Beach Boy Don. This shit ain't normal, people. Have you watched my video yet? Yeah. <laughs> goes, Come on, this shit ain't normal. This ain't normal. You may be looking at it every day, but this shit ain't normal. You know, I've been picking up the trash for 40 years. This shit ain't normal. That's a little character I play, right? <laughs> so, this is what we're doing. This is my fear. And ultimately, I'll be honest with you, I don't care about the money. I'll be completely honest. This is what I care about. And I 100% believe that, and, I, and I'm, a, I'm an optimist, that if we can change CAGR out and change it out to a valuation that's based on turning the planet and healing the planet and doing good for the planet, then maybe we can stop this. But to be honest with you, maybe we can. We may be over that tipping point. We already are. 400 ppm, we hit the limit with the air. 400 parts per million. Are we are at 400 now? We are over 400 and can't get back now. <sighs> well, it's a big problem. So, um, how do we bring CABR about? And CABR is part of something called proof of. Uh, uh, proof of value. Um, Sorry, can I just yeah. ask one question? Because I'm still not getting my head around how we are saving the planet. So is it that we're choosing, the startups is choosing companies that are sustainable and companies that are actually going to... So, so, the, 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 so found-ups are ideas that solve problems locally. Okay. Okay? So the, the idea is we're going to have found-ups in secondary education. And you can have elementary kids walking around saying, what problems? Well, we see a lot of trash here, okay? What's the solution? Well, I can pick up the trash. Well, well, uh, you know, uh, what can you do with that trash? It's not about just picking it up. What can we do? Sustainable companies. companies right. That so, so ideally, Fallops is, is empowering people to take action and start pro solving the localized problems. Remember, initial, the, the first DAO we're launching is DAO Zero. So remember I talked about the pre-seed, the seed, the early BC, the late BC, the Sequoia Capital is the late BC stage. Mm -hmm. They're putting in, you know, 50 to $200 million into, into projects. That's the late seed. Every time our DAO launches found us, they become the next seed down. So when, when our first, when our level zero DAO launches its first found ups to OPO. This is I'm kind of this is kind of talking to you on this because you we had this discussion. Then that these each of these actually become its own DAO. It becomes a DAO one. When these projects here launch, now we're DAO two. When these projects here launch, we're DAO three. Now understand what happens is an idea can very quickly because of the right. And also, these projects can become very specialized. They could be, you know, agriculture. They could be pharmaceutical. They could be... So by level... Understand, a level four DAO is Sequoia Capital funding. At this stage, this DAO and the connection of DAOs with it are, are, are potentially pumping hundreds of millions of dollars into these ideas. So imagine, you know, ed, um, uh, free pharmaceuticals. 
solutions, you know, very low cost. So like the pharmaceutical market has a monopoly. Imagine us disrupting that monopoly with our own drugs that ultimately are very affordable for Africa, for the world, right? And, um, and that's just... Putting us in the prices that actually could... Ex sense. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. So, um, so, so BI is... Everything that we're doing is built around um, uh, an autonomous agent. So think of it that these, 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 in their traditional model, I have to pitch to an investor and say, here's my business plan, here's this, here's, the, you know. This will be the last pitch you ever did. <laughs> so, nah, so, so in our model, it's driven by AI. Kind of like Google knows what you're interested in. Hmm? How's that? Facebook recognizes your face. All right? Um, it, 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 it's actually putting stuff that it thinks that you may like on your Facebook page. It's pushing that. Now imagine businesses driven with that same kind of technology. Where as people like, and, and you know, if, if I'm doing a fracking found up, it's very unlikely my found up is going to happen. Mm. Right? Maybe, but probably, I don't think, I mean, I'm not, we're not going to dictate what can or can't be done with found up. I hate gatekeepers. I will say that again. I hate gatekeepers vehemently because I have been denied so many times by gatekeepers that I'm like, there is no gatekeepers. So if you want to do a fracking found up, and you can convince that it's a good thing for the planet and people fund it, I am not going to deny that. Right? So if, if people you know, are, going to, are, are going to do selfish um, uh, found-ups, that's fine. But the thing is, a minimum of 20% of capital gains and net profit goes back into the system. Imagine if, of, if all these, 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 these companies right, would put their 20% of their capital gains and net profits back into a system for launching more beneficial ideas. So, so if you... You get that, Marcus? Yes. Okay. What is the difference between putting it back into other businesses and paying the fines? Paying sustainable you know, fines for whatever it is that you... So, so for us, it's, we're, we're trying to create an ecosystem that will empower people to be the change. Okay. Okay. It isn't about them paying the fines because I don't think foundups number one will pay any fines because foundups are the idea behind foundups is that they don't right right don't hurt the, the planet. Right. So the idea here is that this is our headless decentralized venture capital fund, and imagine that all of these ideas. Some of them, I'm guessing 2.5%, again, from that law of diffusion of innovation, right, from that CAGR, 2.5% um, are known as innovators. I think 2.5% of our founders will launch as their IPO. We call it OPO. Right. The difference between an IPO and an OPO is this, is that with, a, with, a, with an IPO, um, you decide who gets to invest first. Then it goes on the public exchange. So all the pre-sellings happen. Then it goes on the market, right? With an OPO, there's none of that. It becomes at that point, it gets shared. Anyone can participate. There is no insiders. Fine. Okay. So here is actually something that, that I um, um, remember I talked about that in 2000, I started working on a framework. I shared this framework in 2012 with a guy called um, Alisi. Um, uh, Mihao Alisi, who is the mentor of the guy who launched Ethereum. They were working together at the time. Vitalik. Vitalik, right? So here is my, I have the idea of this framework. These guys are engineers. And what they did what was brilliant, and I, I would never have been able to do it, and it's fortuitous that I did tell them, is they figured out how to engineer my idea on Bitcoin to launch Ethereum in 2014. So it took them a year and a half to write a white paper based on everything and I can, you know, maybe we can log in, I can show you my, what I call a theoretical uh, DAP, which is a decentralized app, running on a theoretical 
platform that I can no longer access because the company went out of business in 2013, a year before this white paper came out. But I can show you everything that they claimed is unique on there back in 2012, 2013, on that. So seven years later, the uh, Ethereum framework came out, right, from when I started to then, um, which is the engineering of my framework, right? And ultimately what founders are is they're de startups, they're decentralized startups. Just like Wikipedia is a decentralized encyclopedia, which means anyone can participate on a, on a founder. The reason why I have D, because it's like if I say founder, it's hard for you to wrap your head around it. But if I say a decentralized startup, like Wikipedia is a decentralized encyclopedia, it's easier for you to wrap your head around. We own this trademark, by the way. We also need to grab this trademark probably in you know, South Africa and other places, the D, right? And our smart now is this fund run by AI. So the AI is going to release the gas into ideas, not some venture capital, not some investor, the AI will. And the AI will release it based on likes, based on follows, based on, based on the caber growth of this project. Question? Do you get that? So, it, right? so think of it as a self-driving self, self car, yeah. but that car is a, is a startup. The, the, just like um, um, a car can navigate around corners, obstacles, the uh, AI is going to know, okay, we need to get this person involved or this person involved. It's going to be able to anticipate and help these ideas grow. But are they controlled by a governing body or is it controlled by... The founder. The founder. The founder and the team. The founder is God. I say dog because I'm dyslexic. So I say you're the dog, right? That means you're the... Because the last thing I want, I believe the founder, the visionary, again, the reason why I walked away from it, because I said, I am the artistic director, the visionary behind Founders. I'm not giving that up. I have a very clear, concise direction, purpose for Founders. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be damned if I'm giving up that vision. I come from a theater background. So, in, 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 and I don't know if anyone has a theater background or understand theater, but the artistic director is the dog. The managing director would be like the CEO in a company, right? But the, the artistic director is more than the CEO from that. So I see myself as kind of the artistic director behind Founders. We, so we do, though, however, need a kick-ass CEO. We need someone who's going to be on the head of Founders. I'll be the chairman. This person is going to, you know, having this person on board is going to give us a lot of legs. I know that's not me. I have a question. How, how different is it from, you know, Kickstarter, you mentioned Kickstarter yeah, earlier. You go Kickstarter. The difference between Kickstarter and... There's no fund, there's no money coming in from Kickstarter. Yeah. There's no fund coming in from the organization, it comes from the public, right? The, right, so, so, so funding... Would, but once they get the 100%, we're going to take that 100% it's going to be 80% and then 20% goes back into the... Okay. To the so, so, so basically thing with this way is... is Think of, think of our fund as, as an underwriter for the valuation of that idea. Good way to think of it. So think of there's two tanks. We have one tank, which is, which is our own currency. We have another tank, which is actually supported by Bitcoin and other currencies. Right, okay. what this, so we're saying this found up has a five times valuation. That five time valuation is because of this support. Which means if you exit out of this valuation, we're going to meet, we're going to, uh, we're going to um, basically um, um, uphold that. Right. Because our algorithm says it's that. And we'll pay it out. And see, the way we make money is we want people exiting and entering into founders. This quick interaction is our microcurrencies. Because when you exit out of founder, you now create a way for someone else who wants to come into the founder to buy in. Right? And when they buy in, when he exits out, so we make that small little transaction. Um, we will have, what, another transaction is we are going to create discounts. So we can take a thousand trademarks and we can get a 50% discount from some attorney firms that want to do it. And then we take a percentage of that discount for us. So we, by us, it's the group, what I call the Groupon brokerage. 
right? You know, Groupon, right? So we do the Groupon, we're the Groupon bro broker. So we make that, we, uh, we make that, we make transaction because we also have this, this interface, this mall, this shopping center, where you're gonna see everything that you want. It'll say, here's the actual price and ups, here's your price if you exit out all your fountains. <laughs> so you wanna get that Harley Davidson for 100 bucks, exit out all your fountains, we'll sell it to you for 100 bucks. So, you know, so you will be able to see, uh, and, and here's the other thing is our whole system, unlike Kickstarter, is based on you like seeing an idea and putting money in. Our system is subscription based. We have freemium users all the way up to premium users. Accredited investors, archangels can't even participate in our system. They can, they can, they can have an account. And Explain the archangels again. Okay, so uh, let's do a little, let's do a little, do we have anything? Let's do, can we do the little game? Oh, the, 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 we have tissues? Yeah, we've got four. Oh, great, great, I'll you on that. Origami. So, <laughs> one of, so I'm gonna to explain to you one of yours, one of your little pieces here is going to be a million dollars. I'm not joking. It's gonna be a million, and I'm gonna explain why, and I'm gonna ask you why. So you have one minute, oh, you have two. One minute to make something. So, one minute, one minute, you have one minute to make that million dollar. You gotta make something. Whatever. Oregon, make something. Look at this guy. He's just gonna write the name on that. He's a little cheater. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll give you a pen. I, I, that's a good idea. I like it. So you're, you can write anything on here, on your, on your thing. What are you writing there? Uh, I know what he's writing. You can write anything on here. Yeah. Okay, shh, shh, shh. Anything as in what? Like what do you think you want? To explain anything why it's, anything you want. Anything you want. To explain what? Nothing. Just write so whatever you want. Here's art. Done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Okay, we're done. All right, anything at all. What of yours is worth a million dollars? Okay. And we'll go around. Well, maybe actually a couple of years maybe from the day we know. We're pretty much up there. No, I'll okay. let the craze of the glory. Are you getting the glory? The glory. All right. So you got yours? All right. So let's see here. Answer. What does it say? For the camera. Co-op TV. Co-op TV. All right. Okay. Is it worth a million dollars? Could be. Maybe. I don't know who Co-op TV is. It's what, who's Co-op TV? It's a business of the Keep, keep <laughs> All right, so here it is. Look who made this one right here. Banksy. Do you know who Banksy is? Yeah. <laughs> right. So which one is going to be worth more? Oh, well, at the moment, Banksy's. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, Banksy. I like it. <laughs> so why is Banksy? The question is, is why is Banksy's? What do you have on yours? I right, equals school. Equals school. It could be worth a million. Just be, I'm just BK. BK. <laughs> 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 Banksy's the winner for sure. Banksy's the winner. I don't know who sure. BK was. Who's BK? Friend of his Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So why is this one worth a million and those aren't? Because his name's out there. He's, 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 a, he's a level seven people. artist. He's an archangel artist. He's a level seven. Doesn't get any higher than Banksy. Is there anyone right he's now? He's already got a name and already, he's already somewhat. But he's he started at what? He started at level zero. zero. And then he made something. And he, he, he has gone through the system, through the system, through the system now that, you know, if Banksy, you know, signed my t-shirt, it's worth crazy money. Right? So in Falmouth, and this is, this is actually the secret. It took me nine years to figure this shit out. Uh, Archangels. Startups are so possessive that they don't want to like, you know, give their name yeah, to anything. Give back. They don't want to give back. They're all about it. And I'll tell you my story, what happened to me. And you guys heard it again. And, and I studied at the National Theater in 1994. I studied with Alan Rickman, Ian McKellen. I was one of two undergraduates invited to the National Theater. Uh, it, was a, it was a national program, right? I've been rejected from the BFA program for three years in a row. But here I was, huh? at Florida State, Bachelor of Fine Arts. The BFA program has only 10 individuals out of a program that has 400 individuals at Florida State. And I've been trying to get in this program for three years, rejected, rejected, rejected. 
And finally, you know, this wasn't part of the program. I went an audition, and I was one of two undergraduates in the United States to, be, to go and study at the National, right? Talk about like, fucking hey, cool, you know? So on my return, 